Hello, my name is Blake within the Hyperloop. Today we're gonna to get started with an article about Hyperloop One and the Department of Transportation here in Colorado, CDOT, um, hitting the brakes after the feasibility study. Um, basically, it's come down to um, the price tag of possibly up to $24 billion of Hyperloop One here in Colorado. Um, and that was a little bit too steep for the Colorado Department of Transportation. Um, also, the technology is a little too untested. But this piece in the article is really interesting. The U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Ellen Chow created a non-traditional and emerging tran transportation technology, or NET, department to support projects like Hyperloop and self-driving cars. It's still far out for many, but public and private groups are still taking small t steps. Um, Ariel Wolf um, told the conference here in Colorado about Hyperloop um, that a few years ago, um, you know, it's, this federal agency um, wouldn't take Hyperloop seriously because it doesn't quite fit any one category. Um, but now that NET uh, uh, is here, he says um, it exists um, to help the Hyperloop industry navigate through various regulations, permits, and department approvals. Previously, the um, different DOT agencies focused um, on transportation modes such as automobile and trains. Hyperloop fell into the gaps because it's considered a multimodal transportation system. NET was supposed to take the experiences across agencies to avoid reinventing the wheel for each new Hyperloop. So that's good. Um, and also, we see whoops um, that Hyperloop is um, being really seriously considered in Missouri. Um, They've been meeting for months now um, for a blue ribbon panel on Hyperloop, and they're making progress. Um, there's much, you know, many conversations with federal regulators and legislators in Washington and the state of Missouri, um, and the technology companies that are wanting to commercialize this. So um, we see a lot of representatives um, from Missouri. Um, talking about this project. And in this case, the estimated cost of construction is seven to 10 billion from Kansas City to St. Louis, um, which is significantly cheaper <laughs> than Colorado. Um, and it's, it would be a 30 to 40 minute travel time. Um, frankly, it's because I think of the right of way along the interstate I-70 there. Um, so that's cool. Um, this is just a really fascinating article of what it takes to get um, politicians to consider um, these infrastructure uh, projects, um, so I'd highly recommend it. Um, and it really comes out to being that they want this Hyperloop system to first be about a cargo and um, freight shipping containers. Um, and the margin in freight is 40%, um, but they lose money if they're uh, shipping uh, people in, in the Hyperloop tubes. So. Um, even with a working Hyperloop system, uh, shipping uh, companies still would have a deal um, to deal with last mile logistics. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, and they're kind of caching that Hyperloop won't compete directly with rail or trucking. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting that they really want to focus on the, on the freight and shipping container aspect of Hyperloop. Um, going over to Pittsburgh now, um, Pittsburgh to Chicago um, in 47 minutes. Um, people are still enthusiastic and this article um, is just basically saying that um, they're representing mid-Ohio regional planning um, in Washington, D.C. Um, and uh, as we go through this article, uh, the Nets Council um, will be really helpful in helping uh, Columbus and Ohio to, uh, to look at that. Um, and this article from Smart Cities Drive, um, US House approves five million to explore new transportation tech, uh, is about the Net Council um, and how Virgin Hyperloop One is also uh, showing support um, as is Hyperloop TT um, in the creation of this council and how monies are uh, helping uh, fund feasibility studies. Um, so I'd highly recommend you check that out. And now go, let's go to SpaceX pod competition teams. Um, first being Queen's Hyperloop is working really hard. Um, 
in assembling uh, their their pod um, in the final days. So good job, keep working hard. And um, next, uh, Berkeley Hyperloop also is working really hard um, over the summer and um, looks like they're working on carbon fiber stuff, but uh, good job. And then University of Windsor has posted multiple photos of their pod and engineers working on the pod. Um, and also this brief video of their, um, their setup and they're gonna be shipping it really soon to Los Angeles. So that's good, safe travels. Um, University of Edinburgh Hyperloop Team Hype Ed uh, is counting down the days. Um, they've made good progress on components, layout and motor optimization. Um, as we see an engineer working there and more engineers working and figuring out different circuit boards and making sure that's working, so that's good. Congrats, Edinburgh. Um, Delft Hyperloop has had lots of really fun Instagram posts. Um, highly recommend you follow them. Um, they are photoshopping their um, pod in various famous locations around LA, which is really light and fun. Um, and this is a fun photo of spotting the difference, Hollywood or Hyperloop. Um, also check out their stories. Um, they've had a lot of of these kinds of questions, uh, like how many um, components and sensors are on the pod, how much power do the battery store up, um, and I guessed you know it would light up a few a town for a few seconds. Um, are batteries store enough power to light up a small village for a few seconds, or light up five thousand light bulbs at the same time? That's incredible. Um, how many partners do you have? They have 89, that's crazy. Um, what's the average age of the team is 22. Um, how heavy is the shell? Trick question, we have two aero shells, a race aero show and a business aero show. Both answers are correct. That's funny, I didn't know that. How many integrators and non-integrated sensors are there? I'm not sure what a non-integrated sensor is, but 524 sensors. That's a lot. Oops, and um, speed of 100 kilometers an hour, how fast does it take to uh, have the pod break? Uh, only 0.2 seconds, um, that is crazy. Um, that's very fast. Um, how many educational backgrounds? 11 different um, from TU Delft and one from Amsterdam. Um, so this is a fun one. What item do we not have apart from? I guessed uh, drone, but there's paintball gun and mountain bike. We use paintball vessels for the brakes and mountain bike shocks for the suspension. So I was right. Um, that's funny. How many people on the team are working on the pod? 27, I guess 33, that's funny. Uh, business and design and full-scale Hyperloop departments. Oops. Um, and what is Sanders doing? He is tapping bolt threads um, is the right answer. So that's awesome. So good job, Delft, for keeping it light and entertaining um, in the final days. Um, Toom Hyperloop um, is, uh, you know, and finally not only our first half of the team, but also the pod has arrived. Without um, the sponsor, Senator, you know, shipping the pod would be really difficult. Um, so good job. I'm glad the pod is safely there. And Paradigm Hyperloop, um, they have some news to share. Um, and uh, a few days ago we said see you later to our pod as it left testing facilities to make the trip to California. Um, so good job and safe travels as you travel across the U.S. Um, I bet that everybody's wishing that there was a Hyperloop system in the United States to take their testing pods on um, and to get across really boring <laughs> states. But um, best of luck. Let us know what you think in the description or I mean in the comments section and uh, stay in the loop.